Hey everybody, in this video, I'm going to show you how to improve your trout fishing setups. So by the end of this video, when you get out there, you can catch some more trout on your own. It is April 1st and we're about two weeks into our urban lake trout fishing season here in Vancouver. And right across North America, I'm sure there are many cities with urban lakes um, that are stocked with rainbow trout, hungry rainbow trout. These trout are roughly around 250 grams each and uh, they should be pretty easy to catch. Um, it's a fantastic time of year between March and June for beginner anglers. But I've been getting a lot of messages from people saying that, hey Rod, we're not really catching any fish. Are the lakes really just fished out? That is really not the case. The fish abundance is pretty high, but got to keep in mind because these are urban fisheries, um, the fishing pressure is pretty high as well. So it gets pretty competitive. These fish get educated. And if you're not making changes, um, you're not going to catch a whole lot of fish. Let's look at the fishing rods first. Here we have a beautiful Shimano Claris spinning rod. It's rated between 8 and 12 pound test. This rod is not very good for trout fishing. It's great for salmon and steward fishing, but not very good for trout fishing at all because it's too heavy. This Shimano Sedona ice fishing rod is really good for trout, but it's not designed for trout fishing from shore in the springtime. This, is this rod, as the name implied, it's for ice fishing, so it's not very good. On the other hand, here I also have a Shimano Claris spinning rod. This particular rod is rated between 2 and 6 pound test. This rod is very good for trail fishing because it's light. It's rated as a light spinning rod, whereas the other one was a, it's a medium to heavy spinning rod. Um, because these fish are not very big, we're talking about fish that are between 250 grams to a pound each. So you want to go with the light rod. 2 to 6 pound test is ideal. Um, one to four pound test is even better if you can find it. So here I have a G Loomis spinning rod that's rated between one and four pound test. This is in fact my favorite spinning rod to use in the boat for vertical jigging. Um, I also use this to cast and retrieve uh, lures from shore. You can use this for bait fishing as well. The only problem with this rod is it's five feet long. Um, it's not great for shore fishing because you can't cast too far with it. For shore fishing, you tend to have to cast pretty far out, especially if the area is quite shallow. The fish tend to stay out in the middle. So a slightly longer rod, like a six foot long spinning rod is better. Or even longer, here's my flow fishing rod. This is a nine feet long rod and uh, I can cast really far with the light uh, float setup with this rod. So the next thing we're going to look at are spinning reels. Now, just like fishing rods, um, you want to match the fish with the size of the spinning reel. So a 1000 size spinning reel, uh, it's plenty enough for this type of fishing. Um, this particular reel, a Shimano Stratic 1000, holds roughly around 140 yards of four pound test monofilament. Um, that's plenty of line to get the job done. So I use that for casting and retrieving spoons. I use this for flow fishing. Um, this particular one right here, I, I got 10 pound test um, braided lines on it, uh, which is equivalent to four pound test. So again, there's enough line on it to get the job done. But if you bottom fishing with bait, well, where you tend to cast a little further out and the bait has to sink all the way to the bottom. And if the lake is really, really deep, um, you want to, you're gonna use a bit more line. So you probably want to upgrade to a slightly bigger spinning reel. So this Stratic 2500 right here, it's a one size up. So this particular reel holds, again, 140 yards of line for eight pound test motor filament. So roughly, if you double that to four pound test, so that's roughly around 280 yards for four pound test motor filament line. And that's more than enough for you if you wanna do bottom fishing with bait. 2500 size is also what I use for salmon fishing. So if you just wanna get one reel to get the job done for all species, um, this will be the reel to go with the 2500. So the next thing we're gonna look at are floats. So this DNE foam float is rated 20 grams and it's not good for trout fishing. It's way too big. This particular float here, it's ideal for salmon fishing and steelhead fishing, not good for trout. So we're gonna throw it away. So here I have a DNE 
8 gram float and this is ideal for trout fishing. You can go even smaller. So here I have a 6 gram and 8 gram and uh, both of them are very good for trout fishing. And in fact, I have one rigged up on my spinning rod here. So you can see I got a 6 gram float uh, sitting on there. And the reason you want to go with a smaller float, again, is because the fish are not very big. Um, they, they can only pull this down so much, right? If you're using a float that's too big, um, the fish wouldn't be able to pull that float down and you wouldn't be able to see the bites when they actually bite onto the bait. The difference between these two, you can see one is slightly bigger than the other one. The 8 grams holds more weight, so you can actually cast better with this. So if you're not very good at casting uh, floats, go with the 8 gram. If you're looking for sensitivity, uh, going for that, those lighter bites, um, the 6 gram float is uh, it's a good option to go with. Some people may ask, so how do you cast a light float like that really far away? Well, the answer is really simple. Simply use lighter line. Imagine throwing a tennis ball with a rope attached to it. Um, if you have a thick rope attached to the tennis ball, it would be really hard to throw that ball out because that rope is quite heavy. Um, the ball is quite small, so it's kind of weighted down by the rope and uh, you wouldn't be able to throw that ball very far. On the other hand, if you have a fishing line tied onto that tennis ball, you can throw that tennis ball pretty far out because the fishing line is pretty light. It's not going to hold that tennis ball back. The same concept applies to flow fishing, flow casting, um, by using lighter line. Like my line right here, this is 6 pound test monofilament or you can go down to 4 pound test. Um, that allows you to cast a light float out pretty far. The flow fishing setup is pretty simple. So we have your float. This is a sliding float that goes up to a float stopper and you can buy these float stoppers right here to go on the line. So that eventually that float will go up all the way up to the float stopper and it'll be fixed at that uh, depth, okay? So here I have some weight. Um, this weight is used to balance the float. If you have this float out in the water, it's gonna sit like that, horizontally like that on the water surface. Not gonna do anything. But by, by having some weight below the float, it's gonna sink that float down that way. And all you want is to have this orange part right here shown above the water surface. So you wanna use enough weight to tilt the float over and have it sunk down to where the orange line is. If you have too much weight on, that entire float is going to be submerged and then you don't have a bite indicator. By having just enough weight, having that orange uh, part of the float shown above the surface, this is your bite indicator. So when the fish pulls the line, it's going to sink that float and the orange part will disappear on the top and that's when you strike. So I started using tungsten a lot instead of lead because lead is not exactly great for the environment. So I'm trying to switch over to tungsten as much as possible. VMC tungsten sliding weight um, is what I've been using. So we have the sliding float on the main line that slides up and down. And we have the tungsten weight that also slides a little bit. And below the tungsten weight, I have a bead followed by a swivel that's tied onto the main line. At the other end of the swivel, I tie a leader, roughly around two feet long, um, followed by a hook. A size one hook is not good for trout fishing. This is great for salmon, but definitely way too big for trout. On my line right here, I got a size four hook on. I tend to go with a size four into the size six, simply because I find that size four is already small enough for me to hook the fish. And it also prevents the fish to swallow the bait when it's, it's slightly bigger than size six or eight. Um, but you definitely can go down to a size six or a size eight as well. Um, if you don't plan to release the fish, you just wanna keep the fish and uh, not worry about the hook being swallowed. Um, definitely a size six hook or size eight um, can also be used. The leader, which is the line between the swivel and the hook, um, it's pretty important. So I tend to use a fluorocarbon line. So this is a Seagar 
six pound test fluorocarbon you can go down to four pound but six pound is kind of like the standard like i like to go with if you go up to eight and ten there's really no point because again you're catching fish that are less than the pound there's using heavier line it's just an overkill base that you can use include dew worms um, you can use daily shrimp which is also one of my favorite you can also use these single eggs so again this is part to a single eggs and you can simply just take a couple of eggs out and they're ready to go and you want to thread these eggs onto the hook you just need a couple of them and that's that's enough besides flow fishing setup you can also use a bottom up setup um, they both have different purposes um, if the water is quite choppy and you can't see the float uh, properly you want to go with the bottom setup if you're fishing in uh, water that's pretty deep where the float setup can reach um, the fish you want to use the bottom setup the bottom up setup is pretty simple so i have a sliding weight a big sliding weight right here um, this particular one is lead because i can't find any tungsten big tungsten sliding weight and you simply slide this onto your main line so this is braided uh, this is 10 pound test braided line it's thin it doesn't stretch so it's very sensitive and i love it when you're using a um, braided line for bottom setup here you have your sliding weight going up and down the main line and then you put your bead onto the main line the bead is important between the main uh, between the weight and the swivel um, so it prevents the weight damaging the swivel when it slides down and hitting the swivel then you tie your improved clinch knot so through the swivel turn this six times wet it going back to the first loop you formed and then the second loop you formed okay pull it tight so at the other end of the swivel you want to tie a leader on again just like the flow fishing setup this particular leader for bottom up setup can vary a little bit the length can vary a little bit depending on the bottom substrate um, of the lake where you're fishing at um, if the bottom is mud and it's debris free there's no weed you can go with a leader that's roughly around anywhere from a foot and a half to two feet and that's more than enough um, if you're fishing on the weeded bottom where there's weed sticking up you want to go with slightly longer leader so you can go up as long as three or four feet so that bait can get away from that weed the type of bait you use for this uh, bottom up setup is um, this artificial bait such as Pasky bait fire bait this particular one is my favorite they come in many different colors i love to use the chartreuse so you have a bowl like that and you want to cover it on your hook like so so this bait actually floats okay so when he cast this out um, you got your weight on the bottom and it's gonna suspend up it's gonna float up and it's gonna sit like that on the bottom so you have the bottom of the lake and you have your bait floating up like that so it's gonna sit at where the fish are gonna be swimming by so if the fish are swimming by around the foot of the bottom it's gonna be like that and they're gonna see that bait and they're gonna bite it if you're fishing on weeded bottom let's say the weed goes up a little higher two feet extend your leader a little bit to three to four feet so that's going to float up above the weed and again the fish are going to be swimming just above the weed and they can see that bait and they will hopefully they will bite onto that as well with the bottom up setup um, you're not watching the float the float is not your bite indicator but you're actually watching your rod tip okay so this setup when you cut once you cast it out you're going to reel your line tight but not too tight um, just so there's tension between the rod tip and the bait so when the fish bites your, your, your rod's gonna tap tap and that's when you know you have a fish biting it and that's when you strike so there you have it i just wanted to show you a quick video on how to improve your trout fishing setups so you can get out there and catch more fish i am going to do a separate video on how to apply both methods at the lake so stay tuned for that and uh, I hope you find this useful and if you do 
please subscribe to this channel and if you have any other questions regarding trout fishing uh, please leave them on the bottom i'm always happy to answer them and please like this video um, i really appreciate your support and until next time good luck fishing